It's semesters like these that really make me wish my parents were those insane stage parents that force their kids into acting really young. I could have become one of those insanely talented child stars and not have had to go to school. And you may be thinking, Siobhan, those child stars always go off the rails and turn to unhealthy coping mechanisms to deal with the pressure? Well, I'm still doing that right now to deal with finals, so it doesn't really matter either way. Hello, I'm Siobhan Nolan. And I'm Libby Gilliland. After being stranded in an airport for 12 hours, thanks to the wonderful city of Orlando, it's amazing I'm even here. But I couldn't be happier to talk LaSalle sports with my Off the Rails co-host. You're watching LaSalle TV's home for Explorer Athletics Sportsline. <laughs> Welcome to Sportsline. The spring season is winding down, but we still have recaps for you coming up. And later, Siobhan finally gets her men's soccer interview of this semester, where she got to sit down with new recruit Marco Chang. But first, let's take a look at our Sportsline top three. Number one, lacrosse's Emily Johnston was named to the Atlantic 10 All-Conference First Team. The conference announced on Wednesday afternoon. Johnston led LaSalle in goals, assists, points, draw controls, and ground balls in 2022. This is Johnston's third postseason award in her LaSalle career, following her being named to the All-Rookie Team in 2018, as well as being named to the All-Conference Second Team in 2021. Number two, we knew our athletes were smart, as evidenced by how many all-academic teams they land on, but a whopping 13 explorers on the water polo team were named to the MAAC all-academic team this week. Sophie Appler, Sophia Curtis, Sarah DeFusco, Madeline Corper, Carly Linden, Casey Malone, Madison Martinez, Mia Mattingly, JC Morris, Kendra Schlitzer, Caitlin Valentine, Hannah Warren, and Shauna Zuanich all made the team, making this the most honorees LaSalle has had on an all-academic team in program history. Number three, lacrosse's Maddie Henderson was named NovaCare Student Athlete of the Week this week after a standout performance against St. Joe's in lacrosse's final game of the 2022 season. Henderson recorded two goals, two assists, four draw controls, two cause turnovers, and a ground ball against the Hawks, making that game the 10th multi-point performance of the season for the midfielder. So big week for lacrosse this week, having Emily Johnson named to the all-academic first team, uh, not all-academic, the all-conference first team in the Atlantic 10, and having Maddie Henderson being named NovaCare Student Athlete of the Week. So good on lacrosse for really making it their week this week. Yeah, it's great to see, of course, academically, it's very hard as an athlete to mm -hmm. stay performing well and in the classroom, but to see lacrosse doing both and performing so well this season, it's it's wonderful to see. Yeah, and 13 explorers on the water polo team making the all academic team. I'm really surprised I got through that with no mess ups, but that's just also amazing to see that again, like you said, Libby, we can perform in their sports and in the classroom as well. Yeah, 13 people on one team. Yeah. That's incredible. Uh, that's I mean, basically the whole team right there. Just yeah. all LaSalle. Yeah, and you have to think that they're kind of bonding together to mm -hmm. do schoolwork together when you're traveling that much. It's very, very difficult to stay on top of everything and mm -hmm. to see that all like 13 people on the same team are of that standard is is wonderful. And those are players that we talk about a lot, so clearly they really are standing out in the pool as well and in the classroom. But that's it for top three. Now let's see how our teams did in this week's recaps. Track and field traveled down to Charlottesville, Virginia this weekend, where they competed in the Virginia Challenge. On the men's side, Dennis Manier was the highest finisher, tying his season best mark of 2.07 meters in the high jump, claiming fifth place in the event. James Patak competed in the 1500 meters, taking 48th place, while Luke Yuchu Zarikowski competed in the 5000 meters, where he finished in 50th. On the women's side, Ola B.C. Adams placed 15th in the long jump, reaching a personal best distance of 5.82 meters. Liz and Almancini both recorded career best times in the 5000 meters, finishing in 16th and 18th place respectively. Liz crossed the line with a time of 16 minutes and 7.44 seconds, while Elle was right behind her at 16 minutes and 10.22 seconds. Younger sister Christine Mancini placed in the top 20 in the 800 meters, placing 17th. On Sunday morning, water polo took to the pool to the pool to face Marist to determine the third and fourth place finishers at the MAC Championships. 
A quick goal by Madeline Corper allowed LaSalle to take a 1-0 lead in the first period. By the beginning of the third period, the game was tied up 3-3. Three goals in the frame, including one by Corper, gave LaSalle a 6-5 edge heading into the fourth. The Red Foxes went on a 4-0 run, stopped by Kalista Hyam, making the score 9-7, with the favor to Marist. The Red Foxes scored two more goals as the final minutes passed, and the Explorers fell 11-7, taking fourth place in the MAC. The lacrosse team had their season finale against St. Joe's last weekend. The Explorers opened up scoring early in the first when freshman Maddie Henderson made a perfect feed to sophomore Kiki Venza, who found the back of the net, putting LaSalle up 1-0. St. Joe's quickly responded with back-to-back -back goals to put themselves in the lead. However, Venza, junior Erin Welsh, and freshman Claudia Steinmetz all contributed to a 3-0 run to help the Explorers regain the lead 4-2. Senior Emily Johnston netted two of the next four goals scored to extend her team best total to 40 goals. Unfortunately, Johnston would shortly after pick up her second yellow card, forcing the blue and gold to play without the tenacious midfielder. By halftime, the Hawks put away nine goals while holding LaSalle to five to start the second half up 11 to nine. The Hawks found the rhythm in the second half as the Explorer offense faltered. The two goal deficit was extended to a 22 to nine lead. Henderson scored one lone goal in the second half to bring the final score to 22 to 10. Women's golf headed to Disney's Magnolia Golf Course in Orlando last week to compete in their final event of the season at the MAC Championships. On the first day of competition, Hannah Bosler led the team with an 8 over 80. This was the second best score for a sophomore in an opening round in program history. Zeman was close behind her with an 82. On the second day, Bosler once again led the team, topping off her day one score with a 78. Zeman was close behind again with an 83. Just, one, just a one stroke difference off her day one score. On the final day, the Explorers lost some strokes with Bosler leading again with an 86 and Zeman finished her round with an 88. Senior Grace Hickey finished out her college career at LaSalle with a score of 87. This concluded the spring season for the women's golf team. So we have our seasons winding down, water polo is done, women's golf is done, so we don't have to lose Livy to, for any more shows. But, you know, it, it's kind of disappointing to see that lacrosse finished their season really disappointingly. What, uh, women's water polo only finished fourth when the whole season they've kind of been performing better than that. So kind of some disappointing ends to the season, but hopefully it can kind of give motivation and pick back up when fall comes around. Yeah, water polo was one team I was really excited to see how they would do in their MAC championships, and I was disappointed with how they played. But again, that doesn't diminish the successful season that they had, and I think they'll come back next year even stronger. And we still have, you know, some other teams to talk about, but we are going to be running kind of thin on recaps, and it's going to be interesting to see recruiting and who ends up signing for LaSalle and what the teams are going to look like going into next season because there's a lot of seniors, a lot of grad students, so it's just really going to be interesting to see what direction the teams go in, you know, as the fall season uh, enters in. Absolutely, and I can say on the golf side, disappointing end to our season. Mm -hmm. Not exactly what we wanted to end with, but we do have some recruits coming in. We only had one senior graduating, and our sophomore class, we have four strong players. So I think we're going to get back at it next year even better, and I'm excited to see on all teams what recruits are coming in, but especially for golf. Yeah, it's definitely going to be something that you want to look out for. And I just, I'm really excited because LaSalle has so many teams that are going to be on the come up. There's going to be a lot of programs that, you know, freshmen will want to be a part of in rebuilding. So I'm just really excited to see how many recruits come in and who, you know, is going to help hopefully bring LaSalle teams back to, you know, winning ways. Yeah, I think we're, a lot of teams are settling into good regular season performances mm -hmm. and I think it comes down to the MAC championships, A-10s, mm -hmm. everybody needs to perform there too and I think once they start doing that recruits are going to be noticing um, not only regular season but those postseason performances. And there's been some coaching changes too. You know, we have a lot of newer coaches. Fran Dunphy just got named. Taylor Thames is only going to be going into a second season. So there's a lot of new coaches that still have yet to build their own teams. So it's going to be really interesting to see how these new coaches turn the programs around and make it their own because that's part of the problem with these results is that these coaches haven't really been able to make the teams their own yet. Uh, so we're excited to see where that goes, and that's it for recaps. But when we come back, Marco Chang gives us some insight into men's soccer spring season, including their big game against Drexel on Friday. Stay tuned.
Exposure to blue light can mess with your sleep and memory cycle, so make sure you limit your screen time at least two hours before you go to bed. Meet Norm. He lives with anxiety. But with the help of this latest innovation from Be Normal, he can be normal. Just like everyone else. With the swipe of a finger, you can project happiness, confidence, machismo. Why settle for being real when you can be normal? The Normal Maker. New from Be Normal. This item doesn't really work because there's no such thing as normal. We're all different. What we like, how our brains work. In fact, one in five of us live with mental illness. Don't filter who you are. Start by talking to someone you trust. And remember, there is no normal. Welcome back. Taylor Thames has brought in a recruiting class of five new players, including this week's On the Sidelines guest. Check out my interview with everyone's favorite Canadian midfielder, Marco Chang. Hello, I'm Siobhan Nolan, welcoming you back to this week's edition of On the Sidelines. I'm joined today by men's soccer new spring recruit, Marco Chang. So Marco, spring season is coming to an end. You have Drexel on Friday, but looking back at your past four games, what has kind of been the mood of the team, how you guys have been playing together and just getting used to, you know, having the spring recruits integrated with the guys that have already been here when Taylor came? I think that the mood is shifting in a very positive manner because at the beginning of the season, if I'm being honest, it felt very, like especially being the new guy, it felt very split up. The group, I guess maybe it could be due to the fact that, you know, the, the team last year did not have the best record. But again, with all the training, with all the uh, even team activities, and again, with the, all the games like you mentioned, the team is gelling together. And from a playing perspective, I think we've, we're only improving game by game. And you in the midfield have taken on a very important role. You are kind of proving yourself to be a guy that can control the midfield, do defensive work and attacking work. What is it like for you to come in here and then almost instantaneously be given such a big responsibility in midfield? I think it's something that is very special. Uh, I'm on, honestly very happy that, you know, the coaches and that, as well as the players trust me in that role. And again, I just hope to hopefully continue to improve and help the team improve and hopefully we'll be on our winning ways. And with Drexel on Friday, you were kind of trying to get recruited by Drexel in your first year of college. Obviously, that didn't work out. You ended up here. So what is it going to be like for you to play against them and kind of face the coach that tried to get you um, when you started out in West Virginia, recommended you go junior college, and then you ended up coming here instead of there? Um, I think it'll be very interesting just because uh, the coach at Drexel, who actually obviously tried to recruit me, He's never actually seen me play mm -hmm. in person, and obviously it was all through film, and him and I have a very good connection to this day. But uh, again, it'll be on a personal level, obviously I'm going to want to beat him, not just obviously for the team to win, but uh, it's also a message, message indicator that like, hey, like you missed out on someone who could have helped positively influence your team. And then, you know, you've had that journey from D2 junior college to now D1. It's a crazy journey, yeah. and to end up here, is just such, you know, it's a, a path that not many athletes have taken. Right. So how do you think that previous experience has helped you be the best player you can be for LaSalle? So if I'm being totally honest, I think in my recruiting year, if I did go to a straight Division One program or school like LaSalle, mm -hmm. I don't think I would have the success that I have now. Mm -hmm. Not saying I have a lot of success right now, but uh, just because of the maturity and throughout the journey, Obviously, like you mentioned, from Division II to junior college, there was a lot of personal growth that was off the field. Like I told you, my maturity yeah. or the ability to obviously adapt to new situations and everything. But I think that with all those experiences, the biggest thing is definitely, again, the me just growing as a person, definitely yeah. growing as a player. 
from meeting different players from different backgrounds and different coaching styles and playing styles. But uh, overall, just, yeah, without those experiences, just will not be able to be here. And now that you are here and you have experienced a, a good number of games so far, what would you say f as a team, the biggest strength that you've seen from, you know, playing so far and the biggest right. thing that you guys need to improve on for the fall? I think the biggest strength is that us as a team, we now have a, a way to play. We mm -hmm. now know the ultimate goal as a team and we're heading towards it. I mean, mm -hmm. there's moments in games, even against Seton Hall, obviously we lost three nothing, which is not a good result. But mm -hmm. if you're watching the game, like we, it was not a three nothing game. Mm -hmm. We definitely had moments where we looked like the better team. And obviously if we can just be more, a little bit more consistent, then those results are going to be in our favor. So I think to answer your question about the weakness part, mm -hmm. I think the biggest weakness is the ability to stay focused throughout the whole game, because during this whole spring season, the only way that a team really has scored on us is through set pieces. Mm -hmm. And so that obviously involves urgency and just the ability to stay focused the entire game. And another kind of interesting thing is that you have a lot of guys that are going to be leaving this right. year, meaning that the recruiting class is probably going to be really sizable too. So yeah. that can be kind of a good thing and a bad thing. So for you, if you do have that really big recruiting mm -hmm. class, what do you think that's going to mean for the team coming this fall and then in the years ahead for LaSalle? So I personally think that it's a good thing that we obviously have a massive recruiting class mm -hmm. due to the fact that a deep roster is what will win us games mm -hmm. because, like we said, everything is unpredictable. Like last season, I heard that because the team caught COVID, like half of the starting lineup was out. Mm -hmm. And obviously not saying that the substitute players weren't as good, but at the same time, a deeper roster just means a bigger variety. It means a harder competition at practice and everyone's ultimately improving. And so I think in terms of the years to come, I do trust Coach Taylor just mm -hmm. because like at the same time she did bring me here yeah. and as well as the other five recruits that are here as well. Like mm -hmm. I do trust that that however many recruits coming will be a positive impact towards the team on and off the field. And then in the summer, you're playing USL too right. for Philadelphia Lone Star mm -hmm. for Reading. You're going up quite a few of your teammates you have. Uh, Zach Moore, Isaac Sedin, um, you know, a bunch of other players that yeah. you've mentioned. So are you kind of looking forward to being able to play against them in that environment? Or is it kind of intimidating to have so many of them on that team and it's just you for the Lone Star? <laughs> to be honest, I think it'll be really fun mm -hmm. just because, I don't know if fun's the right word, but <laughs> at the same time, it will be very competitive because I know that those guys who are playing there, so again, like you mentioned, like Zach, Isaac, uh, Pucci, mm -hmm. Uh, Ike yeah. and Tala, they're all very competitive guys, really yeah. hardworking guys. They all want to win. And so it'll be, it'll be sort of a test for me on a personal level mm -hmm. to see like, hey, like how far have I come? Yeah. Or maybe are they intimidated to play against me? Or yeah. am I, when I come to the moment, am I going to be a little intimidated? So overall, I think it'll be a good test. And, and, with, it'll be fun. and what's the advantage of having so many players? Because you also mentioned that uh, Justin Bruno is playing on another right. team. So you have... Uh, a pretty sizable number of guys on your roster playing in that USL2 semi-professional. Right. What do you think is the advantage of having that kind of experience in your team as well? I think just having more, <laughs> sorry, more guys on your summer team playing obviously at the same university, especially the division one level. Mm -hmm. Chemistry is mm -hmm. definitely the biggest thing just because like within the four, the five players that are playing at Reading, for mm -hmm. example, four of them are on-field players. Yeah. Tala's an attacking threat. Mm -hmm. Isaac and Ike are both midfielders, and mm -hmm. Pucci's a good center back. Like yeah. They have the chemistry. They understand where the runs are. They understand mm -hmm. the movement off each other. Mm -hmm. Whereas like me, going to Philadelphia Lone Star, like I haven't played with any of those guys, yeah. honestly. And so chemistry would be a big thing, which is why they have the advantage. But again, we'll see with training and everything. <laughs> and obviously, in the home, home open ride writing, like we'll yeah. see who's going to win. And so just to kind of wrap up the interview, we like to do something where we ask uh, for team superlatives okay. for you guys. So to start it off, who would you say is the best dancer on the best soccer dancer. team? Best dancer? Probably Tala. Tala? I think Tala is the f funniest dancer. Okay. I, I don't know about best. I don't know about <laughs> but best. the most entertaining. D Hundred heads down, the most entertaining. It's not a doubt yeah. in my mind. Because don't you guys have the thing where you, if you're late to the team circle, you have to do a dance or sing yeah. a song. So yeah. does he have to do that a lot? And you've seen a lot of it. So there, there was one practice where, <laughs> sorry, there was one practice where he had to do two of them. Okay. And it was just, 
uh, everybody was just laughing. It was, it was a good time, but at the same time, Tala is definitely the most, I'd say, entertaining dancer and person, yeah. personnel on the uh -huh. team, for sure. Yeah, for sure. so who has the best style? Who dresses the best on the team, in your opinion? Dresses the best. It depends. Are we talking about formal, informal, just daily? Just like everyday style. Like, who do you see walking around campus right. that's just always like dressed up, you know, not in their sweats or pajamas okay. or anything? Well, I can't say me because I'm always in my hoodie and shorts and everything. Yeah. <laughs> but I'd say the best style I could give it to. I think the new guy, Dylan. Yeah, really? Dylan has pretty. His style is pretty casual, uh -huh. but you'll never catch him wearing the same, like, outfit per se he, yeah. he's always mixing and matching and he he's overall just he comes off as a very stylish guy so mm -hmm. i'd say Dylan. and there's a lot of close like friendships on the team who would right. you say is the most like troublemaker duo like when you put two guys together like you know something's gonna something's gonna happen <laughs> so i think it's either gonna be poochie and nigel okay or yeah poochie with anyone <laughs> really just poochie yeah, yeah. he's but you just can't be trusted with anyone. He is the troublemaker, 100%, mm -hmm. without a doubt in my mind. And then who would you say right now is kind of the team dad? Like, the team player dad. that kind of keeps everyone from getting too crazy or kind of like the voice of reason for you guys? I don't think we have one right now. Okay. I don't think we have a team dad, mm -hmm. but the dad all of the team we joke about is Carlos because yeah. he does look a lot older <laughs> yeah. than the rest of us. So. Okay. Yeah. And then who would you say is the funniest, most immature, but like gets away with it, like they never get in trouble for Justin. it. Justin. Yeah. Without a doubt in my mind, Justin. <laughs> yeah. Justin will, our practice, because we train pretty early in the morning. Like uh -huh. We train at 7, well, we have to be at the field at 7.15. Yeah. And at 7.15, you already hear him <laughs> singing songs, making <laughs> jokes, calling our, like, our assistant coach, even our head coach, like, nicknames. Mm -hmm. Like, he's a very playful, very positive spirit, and like, yeah. you can't get mad at him. Like, yeah. even if it's serious, like, if he says something, like, we're all just gonna, like, look at each other and start smiling a little it's bit. So, yeah, it's just Justin. And then since yeah. you guys do train so early, right. who in the team is just worst in the morning, not a morning person, Pucci. you don't, Pucci again. Thought down my mind, Pucci. If Pucci wakes up on the wrong side of the bed, yeah. someone will lose their leg. Like, does does some... he, like, drink coffee or anything, or does he just show up and he's, like, pissed? Honestly, I, I don't want to ask him. I yeah. get scared sometimes in the morning, <laughs> yeah. if I'm being honest. But... Yeah. Definitely Pucci. He's the uh, not only the troublemaker, but he. Mm -hmm. Oh, if you catch him in a bad morning, like it is not good whatsoever. <laughs> yeah, so definitely want to be careful around Pucci in the mornings. But we can't wait to see you guys play away at Drexel yeah. on Friday. That's at 6 p.m. If you can travel, you don't want to miss it. But Marco, thank you so much for joining us. Of course. And I will send it back to the desk. Of course. Thank we're going to take another quick break, but when we come back, we'll give you the upcoming games for the week and our Explore Report game of the week. Still don't have an explorer. <laughs> Oh my god, I swear, these sports show hosts just get dumber and dumber as time goes on. Like, I can't believe people are actually paid money, real money, more than what I make at my job to say this stupid stuff. Like, I can't believe this crap. Oh my god. I'm just gonna, I'm about to lose it. I'm about to lose it. Like, this is just, how can they even, like... Hey, what you doing? This stupid sports show. These people have no idea how the game of basketball is played. Not at all. Hey, you're not you when you don't watch LaSalle TV. Here, let me show you. You're not you when you're not watching LaSalle TV. To stay up to date, follow us on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. Yo, bro, what's good? What's going on? How you feeling, man? I'm doing good. How you doing? When did you start smoking? Smoking? It's a jewel, bro. It's a jewel? Yeah. Listen, you might as well be smoking cigarettes. When you start jeweling or vaping, you're four times more likely to start smoking cigarettes. Is that true? That's very true. Hey. Give me the drink. You don't need it. To learn more about e-cigarettes, go to thetruth.com. Our story was begun by someone else. Our story was often shaped by generations before them. 
our story was forged and maybe even defined by the experiences of our childhood. But it doesn't need to be. You can be the author. Learn how at numberstory.org. Welcome back. Here are the upcoming sporting events you should look out for this upcoming week. Men's golf will spend the weekend competing at the A-10 Championships as track and field take on the Penn Relays. Rowing will also take to the water to compete in the Bergen Cup and the Kelly Cup. And that just about wraps it up for us this week. If you can't make it out to see the Explorer Report, be sure to tune in next week for our coverage. Keep up with this weekend's other sporting events by visiting GoExplorers.com. You can also check out the digital edition of The Collegian, which now features Sportsline content. Also check us out on Facebook at Facebook.com slash TV and on Instagram at SportslineLTV. We welcome you to send your thoughts and suggestions there. This week's poll is, which one are you, Gaslight, Gatekeep, or Girl Boss? <laughs> for our entire Sportsline team, I'm Siobhan Nolan. And I'm Livy Gilliland. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you at the game.